Okay, uh, I can start. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, this is a, a continuation of uh, you know this. Uh, so the first uh, the first lecture that I presented like nearly two weeks back on North Kerry, but that was uh, kind of preparing a ground. So today, what we will what I will do is uh, I will uh, it's a very brief and elementary exposition of uh, this connection between North invariance and uh, a chance Simon's theory. Now this was uh, done in the historic paper by Ed Witten uh, from 1989, uh, which is the title being the quantum field theory and Jones polynomial. And this is, you may think, say that it is one of the papers for which he got uh, the Fields Medal in 1990. So uh, before going to the st starting, let me just recapitulate quickly because we don't need much. So what was the basic points about knots? So we knots were essentially uh, embedding of uh, S1 uh, into S3. So a knot is basically embedding, smooth embedding of S1 into S3. So this is an, un this was an unknot. We usually we usually denote or present not by their projection on two dimensional plane, and this is uh, the uh, famous uh, trifoil uh, trifoil knot, the first non-trivial uh, knot. Secondly, uh, two knots. Two knots are considered to be uh, equivalent uh, if uh, they can be deformed into one another. without crossing themselves. So, and this is called to be ambient isotopy. This is known as ambient isotopy. Third point was of course, <laughs> The way and we discussed was this not invariant. These are objects, objects. Uh, so these objects are like uh, starting from simple numbers. There are polynomials. And more sophisticated objects like groups, you see, which are invariant under the ambient isotopy. So that means that if if two knots are not ambient isotopic, then, sorry, if two knots are ambient isotopic, then they are uh, uh, not invariants are same. Uh, same. Conversely, if two knots have distinct 
ins, uh, invariants, then they are not um, ambient isotopic. Then they are not ambient isotopic. Uh, but what is not true? I mean, what is not true is that suppose, and, and this is one pressing question that suppose. Uh, Two knots have same invariance, uh, then it is not necessary that they are ambient isotopic. And people calculate various kinds of knot invariants like knot polynomials, and that is what we are going to discuss today. So let me just tell you briefly. So these are basically uh, Lorem poly polynomial uh, in some variable. Lorem polynomial means there are positive powers of the variable as well as there are negative powers, but all are integer, like positive integer power, negative integer power, which is one of the invariants. So there are multiple examples. One example is what is known as Alexander uh, Conway polynomial. Another example, which is uh, kind of the center of attraction today, is what is Jones polynomial, and then there are more uh, you know, sophisticated polynomials like uh, form fly PT polynomial, and etc. Multiple. Uh, one important polynomial is uh, Kaufman uh, polynomial, etc. Now the general strategy. I mean, general uh, usual. Uh, Combinatorial strategy of studying or constructing these knot polynomials are like that. So, general uh, combinatorial. Combinatorial. So, Parthiv, just a question here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. so, so, uh, is it true that uh, uh, suppose I wanted to distinguish two different knots, then? Uh, what advantage would uh, is there an advantage of using one polynomial over another polynomial or are they sort of in the same yes 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 no there are actually advantages suppose so it it, it has been uh, observed that so for example the first class so alexander conway polynomial is the simplest polynomial but this cannot distinguish certain knots which jones polynomial can but then there are some uh, uh, some other set of knots which Jones polynomial cannot uh, distinguish, right. which uh, it turns out that Homfly PT polynomial can. Now you can ask this question to what extent you can go. So yeah. That's the open problem still now. Like, what do you mean? I see. So this is this is like the completeness property of these polynomials. I mean, can I expand yeah, any yeah, knot in yeah, these polynomials or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can think of like that. Okay. So the general combinatorial strategy is, of course, that you work with. Uh, Uh, 2D projections and uh, there are <clears throat> 2D projections of the knot. That means you take project the knots on some 2D plane. But then <clears throat> you have to prove whatever knot invariant you define. You have to prove that these knot invariants are invariant under ambient isotopy. Then and in the 2D projection, of course, from, from the 3D perspective, ambient isotopies, uh, we will see what uh, they are, which is very simple. But for, for, from 2D perspective, uh, they can be understood in terms of what is known as uh, Rydemeister moves. Let me just recapitulate. I just put this. So these are uh, Rydemeister moves. So what is the point is that, so there are three moves. There are three moves, uh, invariance under which uh, guarantees uh, invariance 
under ambient isotope. Just to stress that ambient isotope is a three dimension. So it's a, ambient isotope is a movement and ambient isotope is a transformation or continuous deformation in three dimension. But these Rydermeister moves are combinatorial moves that I will just show you for the sake of completeness in two dimension. So there are like, so there are, of course, uh, there's something called type zero. Type zero is nothing but uh, in planar deformation. So something like if these are not, then this is something like that. This is a type zero. Then there's a type one that suppose you have uh, this one strand. So all of these are part of larger knot diagram. So you can, you, you, you can look at a very smaller, any smaller piece and you are applied uh, these moves to the smaller piece. Whatever the diagram finally will get, they will represent the same uh, knot diagram, the same knot, that is the point. So this can be like this. Or, so this is one, this is one possibility and other other one possibility is, so there are two possibilities. So either it can, it, you can deform it in this way or that way. So this is uh, what is called is usually putting a twist in the strand. Type two is uh, something like, here are this thing and then of course, uh, so you just slide one be beyond another and there can be another so that there can be other also so it's something like that so whatever you do that. and then there is type three which is uh, basically sliding this down guy from left to right so this is a type so if something is invariant under type one, type two, type three, these two moves, then you know that that's ambient isotope. But one of the problem, the issue with this is that the usual, uh, this, this usual approach is that, um, this usual approach is that, first of all, it's a, what, whenever there's a definition, the definition is intrinsic, the definition is not manifestly, whatever the definition of invariant, uh, not invariance, they're not manifestly, topological in the sense that they do not exhibit obviously this invariance. So you have to check uh, the invariance under this Rademeister moves to show, uh, to see whether, uh, uh, how does that uh, come up. So that is one uh, main problem that has always been asked about in this, in, in this connection. So that was Precisely the. Oh, so, sorry, I missed your last comment. Uh, can you just uh, yeah. repeat what you said? That what is the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the so the problem is that all these are two D moves. So when mm. you usually when when you are constructing the not invariant, whatever polynomial or something else, the definition is not manifestly uh, ambient isotopy invariant. That means the definition does not tell you obviously that it will be not invariant. You have to show. After taking the definition, you have to show explicitly that it is a not invariant by uh, sh showing uh, this uh, uh, invariance under these kind of moves. So that is ha, so how many uh, so ha, how many moves are there? So uh, right master moves. There are three of them. There are three. So so you can this type zero is a trivial one, but oh, yeah, yeah. main is like one two three. No. But this is uh, of course this is what I uh, what I showed is for. Uh, unoriented knots like uh, there's no direction mm -hmm. so if you add a direction to it then there can be uh, like multiple moves of each kind but uh, it's like all possible moves but then uh, it, it's also true that all of them are not also independent so for example in this type 3 there are like six type uh, like there are 12 types of uh, moves if you, you can think of when adding an orientation but then you can also reduce that to a very smaller subset a number of groups something like that so, and, and in fact, in fact, this this was the starting point of this Witten's work because um, it it was actually this this problem was asked by uh, Atia, who asked uh, basically to give a kind of physics interpretation of this entire uh, so of this not invariance of the Jones polynomial. So Jones polynomials were invented and in, discovered in 1984, and Von Jones was basically working with. Uh, 
some statistic lack of statistical models he was trying to show something else and he accidentally discovered this not invariance so what we didn't showed is that uh, if you work with uh, the john simon's theory which uh, by construction which will be by which we will see that by construction is a topological theory and this if you uh, calculate certain observables in this theory then you will uh, reach these uh, invariants not invariants like uh, in, in a way which makes the this ambient isotopy or the topological invariance manifest so that is one uh, thing that is one thing and second thing is also it's it does not require you to take a uh, projection on the 2d because you are working directly in 3d so that is something that uh, is that you are directly working in 3d so you are like you can try to build up the manifestly uh, topological stuff so chan simon's theory is you know i will just give you a quick review because the students are not not knowing that much so it's a non abelian gauge theory it's essentially a 3d it's it, it's a 3d theory so it's defined only in 3d it's in, in three dimension and we will consider this theory on a 3d oriented oriented meaning you are basically attaching a direction to the uh, manifold so it's 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 almost like suppose you take an s so 3d oriented so let me just uh, so like so 3d oriented compact manifold we'll take this theory to be on 3d oriented and compact manifold so oriented is almost like so suppose you are considering an uh, circle if you consider a circle you can orient this circle by attaching a direction to this <coughs> each <coughs> uh, to the and maintaining a direction along the so this is an oriented circle and this is an unoriented circle just to so this is an oriented s1 this is an unoriented s1 compact again circle is a very good example circle and all spheres are actually very good examples of compact uh, manifold so uh, so for example we will work in s3 so this is basically a three sphere we will work with uh, oriented three sphere on which oriented three sphere then of course there's a gauge group and we will consider and whatever the analysis will be done here is for uh compact gauge group like uh compact gauge group and mostly sun so that will be uh whatever result will be stated is for sun and of course there's a gauge field gauge field and what are, what are, what are these gauge fields so gauge fields are of course uh, here it will, it will have three space time components so these space time components are given by this mu index but these are these essentially uh, these usually take uh, so these gauge fields are actually usually uh, are elements of the lie algebra of the gauge group so there are like so mu is your space time index or manifold index more to properly speaking and a is your lie algebra index so essentially uh, you have matrix uh, the gauge fields are if, if you look for representation you, you have matrix gauge fields okay so when you have so this is what you actually need well this is a smaller subset of stuff essentially everything you need to construct again on a gauge theory in general uh, generally okay I, i was wrong in saying it's a non abelian gauge theory no it, it, it's any it, it's actually a gauge theory it's not non abelian there can be abelian non abelian both there are abelian transform theory as well as non abelian transform theory so the, so this is all you need to define a gauge theory uh, for then oh we also need uh, one covariant derivative so there is also one covariant derivative so in physics literature often the gauge field is dubbed as gauge connection 
but if you look in the math, math literature in math literature will often top the covalent derivative to be the gauge connection and uh, this total so the gauge connection is something like this so this is something like this which when acts on an writing what is it a part of this abelian churn simon's theory is trivial right yes i mean it, well it's, it's trivial well, meaning maybe yeah, topologically it's still interesting stuff so this epsilon is basically a uh, generator of uh, some infinitesimal uh, gauge transformation. Transformation. Hello. Uh, there are two. Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Sachin. Yeah, yes, yes. yes Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I just yes. heard a comment about the triviality of a Biren Chern Simons. There was a question. No, I think Anindya asked yes, this yes, question. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. This could be my ignorance. Yeah. Sachin, maybe you can elaborate. No, no. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, no, uh, it is uh, what you say is uh, mostly right. But what happens is that instead of looking at, uh, uh, it depends on the topology of the space-time. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it on um, um, this cross R. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know that is a three-dimensional space, two plus one dimensions. Then it turns out that uh, the abelian chern simons theory has actually a uh, uh, Katsumori algebra that lives on the boundary, okay. and that can have dynamics. And in fact, uh, I think Witten uh, in this business, Witten will uh, when he constructs these uh, not invariants. He will show. Uh, uh, I don't know if Parthiv is going to discuss this, but uh, he will regularize the Wilson line by thickening it. Uh, okay. Are you going to talk about such things, Parthiv? No, I, I will not. Uh, tell but uh, but software. probably yeah. you have yeah. seen yeah. this kind of thing. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so yes, you yes. you have to. You know, the thing is that A mu is a. I mean, it's all very well uh, classically, but when you do the quantum theory, A mu becomes a yeah. Yeah. A, a yes. quantum uh, operator valued field, operator valued distribution. So you have to regularize it by making the Wilson line slightly thick. I see. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, okay, uh, okay. Okay. And then when you take a slice, when you take a two dimension, when you take a slice, uh, in uh, then you then what Witten shows is that um, at each place that the Wilson line cuts the slice, you get a Katsumori algebra. I see. So. Uh, yeah. This is for S U N in general, but so in I particular see, yeah. for U one, which is the abelian uh, uh, abelian case, you get the U one Katsumori algebra, and um, um, so uh, so uh, I mean your initial guess is right, of course, in India, which is that uh, it's very little. There's almost no dynamic because the equation of motion is is uh, d a equal to zero. Mm -hmm. is but if you have an edge, then you can have degrees of freedom that live on the edge. Okay, I see. Okay, thank so, you very much. And it, uh, I mean, in some situations, um, uh, you might actually want to have an edge. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Please go on, Pratip. This yeah. is just uh, oh, yeah. I uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Not not related to what you were not not related in a central way to what you are talking about. Uh, okay. So uh, so just to uh, mention that uh, just to uh, make one point that there are when we are considering a gauge uh, theory. So there are there are essentially two groups. So one is of course you have the gauge group which is uh, uh, which is. So let's say, so which is the G, so which is for example SU and something. And then there's a group of gauge transformations. Uh, then which is the group of gauge transformations, uh, gauge transformations, which are in this case, uh, in, in this case, basically uh, mapped from uh, M3 to uh, G. So essentially, this we will denote by this G, this curly G. This curly G is actually infinite dimension. Because, uh, because, what, because 
if if you think the gauge transformations you have basically uh, put all those uh, parameters to be local so depending on the sp on the space time of the manifold so now you have infinite number of uh, basically uh, parameters to specify one uh, gauge transformation you think for each point so that's uh, something you know it's to be uh, not to be confused that there are two groups one is the usual gauge group and the two off gauge transformations there is in this case a maps from in 3 to g so with this, I mean, whatever I just told you is, is the, some basics. Uh, so this is the basic stuff for uh, constructing a gauge theory. Of course, it's not the full stuff. I've not told you some very uh, important structure, mathematical structures, but anyway, we can go ahead. Just to put, uh, just to give an example. So if, if, if you want to write Yang Mills on, uh, <clears throat> uh, on a three manifold, so something like the usual Yang Mills, the usual Yang means will look like if I just write down the component form. So this F is the usual, uh, you know, the curvature that we talk about, uh, which is basically uh, commutator of the. Um, Covariant derivatives. So, Yang Mills, uh, in, in the action of the uh, uh, Yang Mills action, uh, uh, gauge theory, what you have, you have essentially explicit dependence upon the metric. So, even at the, at, at the classical level, this is not, this, this actually depends on the underlying metric on the, you need, a, you need to define a choice of the metric on the manifold in order to define this uh, theory. So this can't be a topological theory because uh, essentially it depends on the uh, metric choice. So we, by topological theory, we mean where observers will see uh, which does not depend on the choice of metric. So this is not a very good, uh, this is not a very good uh, candidate for whatever we want to do. So John Simons is, looks like this. So I'm just writing this. So I will, so this k factor will come and this is a very important choice. Plus. So this is the action of uh, Chan Simon's uh, theory. So it's a pure Chan Simon's theory. Like there is nothing, uh, no matter or something. So let me just point out some important things. So first important point is, of course, it does not depends on. It does not depend upon. any choice of metric on M3. So this is the most important point that it's, it's that even the classical action is uh, inherently, you have a topological action to start with because it does not depend on any kind of uh, metric. You don't need to specify any metric on the M3. Second thing, and this is very interesting, and it's very important, uh, very important comment, uh, so this comes that this K is also called uh, a level of the Sean Simons theory, a level of the CS theory. K is actually quantized. That means K uh, belongs, K is actually, K cannot detect integer value. But this uh, quantization condition really comes from the question of gauge invariance. So, if you see the yang mill section involved this f uh, this curvature f's f's now f is manifestly or by construction it's gauge invariant but in the chan simon section you have only you have explicitly gauge field sitting in your action so you may wonder that whether the action is uh, gauge invariant or not so suppose you take gauge 
you want to see this by taking a gauge transformation of the action, what you get. Now, this is a rather interesting uh, scenario that it, it, it is actually it becomes interesting because this, that means uh, this space of gauge transformation. So this guy is actually not connected. This is not, it's topologically, so it, it, it has a, uh, it, it has a non-trivial topological structure. So it, it, it is not connected. Now, what is the important point of this being connected? Uh, what is the important point of, uh, what is the important consequence of this fact is that now you have two kinds of gauge transformations to consider. There are two kinds of. Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Parthiv, can I just say something? Uh, yes, do you yes, mean yes, to say yeah, yeah. not connected or not simply connected? No, I think it's 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 uh, it's not uh, it's not connected. Uh, it's it, so it yeah, has sorry, the, go on. It, it, yeah, it has the pi three, which is uh, is actually uh, uh, yeah. So it is the, yeah the, the usually the when sense. when some when someone says not connected, uh, they mean that pi zero of that manifold is non-trivial. Is that what you mean? No, no, it's it's, it's actually pi three. So uh, yeah, it, it will be simply oh. not simply. So, yes. Yeah. No. So uh, um, no, there is a. I mean, uh, I'm sure you know know exactly what you want to say, but there's a certain. Yeah, so I can't hear you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so if pi naught is trivial, then it is connected. But and if pi one is non trivial, then you say that it is not simply connected. Simply con connected, yeah. So that is with pi one. So, for example, yeah. if you remember when you did uh, uh, group theory, you studied yes, both yes, O3 yes. and SO3, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. O3 is not connected because it comes in two distinct, two disjoint pieces determinant plus yes. one and determinant minus. Minus one, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. so that is an example of, of a manifold which is not connected. But there are uh, manifolds which are connected but not simply connected. For example, SO3 is a manifold which is connected yes. but is not yeah, simply yeah. connected. For yes. higher uh, higher homotopies, there is no simple, uh, there, there is no, uh, the, the people don't use any terminology except to remember that is topologically non-trivial. So yeah, uh, I, okay, okay. So I so, think uh, right. So. Yeah, if I uh, yeah, I think I also miss. But I think uh, so. I I think uh, um, what 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 he I, so I I saw this uh, statement and then but I did not. So Witten actually writes that it's not connected and then he gives uh, so he just writes that pi three is uh, z. But I think yeah. that. So there are two points here. There are two, I mean, um, there are two groups here, as you mentioned, the ordinary G and the curly G. Yes, yes. So there is a, uh, there's a way to, uh, there's a way to relate the homotopy groups of curly G to the homotopy groups of the, of uh, the gauge group. So I see. Uh, the idea is that pi naught of curly G. So I see is equal to pi three of ordinary G. I see, I see. Okay, I see. Okay. So um, uh, what you, I think, uh, so I, uh, I, I think what you have written is correct, but uh, it's just that the G got me confused, whether it was curly G or the, or ordinary G. Yeah. So I think I want to mean this. this uh, uh, right. Right. So this curly G is not connected because then you will have yeah. uh, like there are two kinds of gauge transformations that will be one is they connected to the identity another is like which cannot That's right. be connected to the identity cannot be uh, yeah which cannot be deformed uh, deformed to the identity yeah. yeah yeah which is not homotopic to the identity 
yeah but i think that the distinction you but you do have to make that distinction on the one hand you are computing the the homotopy groups of curly g yeah and on the other hand you are relating them to the homotopy groups of g yes yeah yeah, yeah. the usual case so there is a theorem which says that pi not in three dimensions i mean it doesn't uh, but basically that pi not of curly g is pi 3 of g Oh, okay. So okay, I, I mean, I, if you want, you yeah. can uh, you can just write that. If, I, mean, I, I mean, I would yeah. write it except that yes. so pi naught of curly yeah. G is what you want to find. But there is yeah. a theorem which relates the the homotopies of curly G to the homotopies of the gauge group, and that is pi pi i of curly G is pi i plus three of ah, uh, and these are equal. I see. Yeah, there is a technical requirement that this has to be pointed maps, which is you know the base. You have to choose a base right. on yeah on the three the manifold, base. and the base yeah. has to be identified with the identity of the identity of the group, because yeah. otherwise yeah. Uh, otherwise uh, um, none of these theorems will go through. But yes, yeah, yes. but this yeah. is the statement I think that you want to make that Witten mm -hmm. also probably makes. Ah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, sorry, I'll stop okay. now. You can go on. No, 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 no. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, the, so, so there are uh, like so as Sachin rightly to like you know, so there are like two kinds of uh, gauge transformations. One is uh, what we call is uh, small gauge transformation. Which are uh, so these gauge, so these uh, these gauge transformations can be uh, so it's even like it's a path connected to the identity identity transformation. And then there are uh, large gauge transformations which are uh, which can't be so so these uh, can't be path connected to the. Uh, Identity uh, transformation. So uh, it turns out that that under the small, so under under small gauge transformation, S uh, C S. So so let me just because S C S contains the K K. So let me just define that S cap C S. So the, so S cap C S is SC is equal to k by 8 by capsis. So its capsis is just the independent part of the action. So uh, hi, uh, Parthiv. Sorry to uh, yeah. interrupt again. Yes, yes. Hello. Uh, so yes, um, yes. Uh, I think um, uh, I don't I don't see that there are many students here, and uh, probably yeah. Apurva. In the who are here already know this, but uh, small yes. gauge transformations are basically gauge transformations that are generated by the Gauss law constraint. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. And uh, large gauge transformations. Then you can ask what are large gauge transformations. And large gauge transformations are the set of all gauge transformations quotiented by small gauge transformations. Yes, but uh, quotienting means like you have already uh, okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, I mean, quotient quotienting means that small, small, small yeah, so, have already been collapsed to a point. No, kind of you have to show. You can show that the set of small gauge transformations is a normal subgroup of the group of of the curly G that you wrote. Ah, uh, ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now, because yeah. it is a normal subgroup, you can quotient it and the 
and uh, what you get after quotienting is still a group if you yeah okay mm -hmm. yes 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 of course yeah so yeah that you are you are left with a quotient group actually yes yeah so g g mod g naught is the group of large gauge transformations and uh, this is actually uh, uh, a subtle point i mean like i said uh, probably aninja and apurva already know it but if there are students then uh, they might find it a little confusing as ye uh, ye kya small gauge transformation kahan se aa gaya large gauge transformation kahan se aa gaya abhi tak to kabhi कह रहे हैं कभी सुना भी नहीं था इसके बारे में राइट या बिकॉज़ यू हैव डन दिस थ्योरी बट आई डोंट नोबडी एक्चुअली नोबडी एवर मेंशनड दिस थिंग सो सो दैट्स सो दैट्स व्हाई इट्स काइंड ऑफ या सो दैट्स व्हाई आई जस्ट वांटेड टू से दैट and uh, the other thing i wanted to ask you is that uh, it's only in when you quantize the theory that k becomes quantized right yes 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 obviously yeah because the class uh, only theory that is requirement on k no 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 okay. so it's only when because uh, yeah because in because in quantize because you have you use the cp bar is everywhere so all you right. all it matters is like um, you know e to the power i s remains integer so that uh, right it's very different to k that's the point right okay sorry go on yeah yeah so this uh, small gauge transformation so this so this s cap uh, uh, remains uh, uh is invariant but under this uh large gauge transformations uh so what what you have is that uh this uh change so there is so there is a change and this change is uh it can it can change by Mm. This eight pi square n uh, n belongs to this. Uh, well, so now uh, the question. So that means this uh, this thing this changes by. Mm, what is it? Mm. So this the this changes. So this actually changes by. Um, I, I, I've written something like that. It's not three pies. I guess I, I guess it's four pies. So this changes by some two pi k n. I think I think I think it's four pi. Yeah. So uh, so now uh, of course in so and n has n is only integer in uh, while we do when we when we do quantum theory we will often evaluate the uh, uh, path integrals and then we have our in any gauge a, we want to have this gauge limit observables or something and then when we calculate this uh, vacuum expectation values we will encounter this e to the power i scs so all we need is that e to the power i scs is remains invariant under the gauge so that requirement will give me that k is uh, uh, belongs to the integer or k is quantized so that is what we will work with the k is quantized uh, because we will work with the quantum uh, chern simons theory so k is quantized okay so usually uh, you know usually we see this so so often it's uh, denoted by this a gk uh uh chern simons uh, theory so for example this su2k uh just to put some of this su2k theory plays a uh, very important role in in uh fractional quantum hall effect so, so fractional quantum hall effect 
so k is uh, called the level of the uh, Janssen's uh, head. Okay. Also, 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 we will also see this 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 SU two theory. Uh, so SU two theory also uh, gives me this Jones polynomial. Fine. Okay. Now uh, we will uh, see how this. So what what this uh, connection with uh, the not theory connection. So the central result of the Witten's paper is this that. Uh, not invariants are given by pairs uh, or expectation values of Uh, Wilson line operators. So let's say C is a knot. Then you define the Wilson line operator given by So I must tell the C is a knot, but it's a, it's an oriented knot because which you the orientation you need in order to define uh, uh, this P. So P is basically path ordering. So you, you need an oriented knot in order to uh, define in order to define the path ordering because path ordering really tells you that how should you travel uh, travel the path uh, along the closed loop. And R is some representation of G, whatever representation you take. And trace of R is simply the trace in this representation. So this is uh, this is what um, our Wilson line operator. So this has this has an oriented knot, or it may be oriented. Uh, it, it has an oriented knot C, which is a closed loop essentially, and a representation R associated with this. Then uh, you find so this is the. Uh, uh, expectation value the things like i s c s so this is basically a space of all vector fields modulo Uh, modular gauge transformation. So this is a uh, space of all vector fields, modular gauge transformations. So on which you are basically doing uh, this path integral. So if you have a for more general links, Uh, comprising of non intersecting not C I R, let's say, uh, then we assign. Representation R I to each knot. And
So this this gives you uh, a link invariant. Again, each CI is uh, is an oriented knot. So so this is this is often denoted by this quantity uh, is uh, you know, often at least at least in his paper it's called. Uh, The partition function of M with L. So, which is so Z is actually uh, a link in value. If there are no knots, if r equal to zero, i.e. there are no knots present, then z m three, which is just uh, SCS. This is a topological invariant of the topological invariant of uh, the manifold. Three manifold M three. So ZM3 uh, is a manifold invariant, and much of this uh, work that in from this derivative actually um, involves this scheme. So now we have to uh, calculate this, uh, these, these kinds of, uh, these kinds of, um, uh, these kinds of uh, path integrals. Oh. Over some, uh, over some, and also how to construct not invariants or not polynomials. We are going to show that. So I will just uh, sketch out. I will not go into all the details, but I will just sketch out the basics. So the first step is, of course, you have to quantize uh, uh, the quantize the CSTL. So the basic strategy is this, that so one chops the three manifold into pieces. Is, I mean, solves in the sense uh, Quantizes uh, on each piece and then glues back all the pieces together. So, be, so it's 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 actually uh, it's already familiar. It is from, even from the usual QFT. What we do in usual QFT, in usual QFT also we will when one one does the path integrals or in usual quantum mechanics also they say they they, they basically connect by via by means of path integral they connect basically various time slices. So in the case of quantum mechanics, of course, it's then one instant, but in the case of quantum field theory at uh, each time, or there may be some uh, surfaces kind of stuff. And of course, uh, at each of these surfaces or each of these slices, one considers Hilbert space. 
and path integral basically gives you how a time evolution or how to a means of way of connecting the hilbert space in different surfaces so this is uh, the same thing uh, this is the same uh, idea that is uh, allowed and i think uh, also the same this same idea that in quantum field theory that you need to consider this uh, this slices and you associate hilbert space you associate hilbert space to the slices and then quantum field theory is basically specifying quantum field theory specifying meaning the specifying the correlation function but this basically what does this correlation function do this correlation function actually connect these various uh, hilbert spaces of the slices and this is like this is also the a viewpoint taken in the modern uh, mathematical axiomatization of quantum field theories mm. so let me just show you how so just basic you know how, what so let's consider so there are two pieces we can consider so one is of course without any wilson line so what you do is that suppose you have a um so this is like an m3 and you cut this m3 uh, at some riemann surface sigma sigma is a riemann surface so riemann surface is nothing but uh, you can it's it's a it's a two dimensional manifold but it's a two dimensional manifold on which you can define a, a complex structure so it's a complex one dimensional manifold better a one dimensional complex manifold and what one do if if i if i see locally i mean locally near this uh, cut or near this uh, chopping point this locally looks like sigma cross r so very near to this uh, cutting point this actually uh, this 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 piece actually looks like the sigma cross r r1 so one quantizes the cs theory uh, one can so one and can be done canonically on this uh, sigma cross uh, r1 and this uh, and this quantization is actually close uh, this quantization or what when you quantize a the theory on this uh, sigma cross r1 this has this close relationship with uh, cft zone uh, sigma so so this so you are looking for a physical hilbert space on this sigma so you are looking for some physical hilbert space on the sigma and r r that that cross r you can think of some kind of time evolution and this hilbert space or rather the space uh, state space is uh, related to as you know space of conformal blocks of uh, cft on sigma so there is this uh, connection between uh, between uh, the conformal field theory like two dimensions in the conformal field theory and this three dimensional theory that means that means in a sense uh, this connection uh, can be stated this connection is actually that is uh, basically you can think of this connection is often called as the space of conformal blocks in 
वन प्लस वन टी और क्वांटम हिलवुड स्पेस ऑप्टेन बाय Containing a two plus one d uh, here. Similar thing can be done when uh, you know when there is width Wilson line. With Wilson line, so suppose uh, you have a Wilson line uh, W which goes like that. and you can uh, cut again on with a sigma but now 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 the wilson lines actually move through the sigma so basically you can think of the sigma actually cut the wilson line so now what you have you have a same sigma cross r1 cut your uh, But your Riemann surface sigma is actually marked, so it's called the sigma is actually marked. So you have a, you have also now a Riemann uh, Riemann surface, but it's 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 marked in the sense that you have some points on uh, that Riemann surface, which has certain representations actually associated with them because each Wilson line has a representation associated with them. so that is uh, that is that that's also uh, that is also related to uh, cft on sigma but now you are considering uh, cft where uh, like where where uh, non where operators are in, inserted at those marked points so this is almost like inserting uh, this vertex operators that people do in like string theory something so you the operators with Definite quantum numbers are inserted on at this mark point. So that's why much of this analysis that this analysis of quantizing uh, on this surface sigma cross R one or this physical Hilbert space that we are trying to construct on sigma that actually comes from that that gets related to the CFT the, con, the space of conformal blocks uh, in the two D CFT in two D CFT on the sigma. so this is what what it does tell you is that it gives you an information about what is the hilbert the physical hilbert space on this riemann surface sigma now surely what you need to do and what when you when you are when you are trying to finally put everything together you basically uh, glue them all the pieces glue all these pieces uh, together to to finally uh, do the uh, full fledged quantization of the cs in the m3 so taking q from this suppose you have a suppose you have a not in the in the in S three in in this case S three, but it, this analysis is general. It's general for M three also, in the general any three manifold. But for S three, what you do, you 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 just focus on a certain uh, certain crossing. Let's say this crossing, this crossing, and you scoop out this crossing. So what you do is basically you scoop out a. part of the three manifold involving this crossing of course where where this this uh, part of crossing is that and when you scoop out you are left with two pieces so in one piece so when you in what way we are scooping out we are scooping out uh, along the simplest boundary so you you just draw a sphere so basically you are from this s3 you scoop out a a three ball so you scoop out a three ball of uh, with an s2 
uh, boundary. So essentially, you have two pieces of manifolds left. So one is the complicated piece. Complicated means means all the rest. And of course, there are uh, strands coming from here, that, that part. But on the other hand, you have the simple crossing. So essentially, you. So all these strands, these strands have actually come from this, uh, these uh, strands and these points at which they are uh, cutting the boundary. Uh, cutting the boundary are coming from this scooping out of this. So we, you have two, three manifolds. One is, of course, we are calling this is ML and this MR. Both have an S2 uh, boundary, but uh, the S2 for both of them has opposite orientation because clearly for MR, which is the three ball, whose boundary is uh, S2, whatever the orientation will be, if for the S2, for the rest of the ML manifold, the boundary orientation of the S2 will be actually opposite. It's almost like an inside out, inside out kind of thing you can think of. Now, if you do a path integral over this MR, over this uh, bulk of the three manifold, then usually what one gets, one gets a state on the boundary. So this is uh, from the usual path integral stuff. That if if you if you do a uh, path integral in the ball, you will get a state on the S2. So when you do that, so according to this configuration, you will get one state corresponding to HR. And if you do the similarly uh, to path integral over ML, so this gives you a path integral over MR and this gives this is obtained from path integral over ML L. where this Hilbert space HR and HLs are obtained in the way uh, I just told in a few minutes ago so it's so this HL, HR HLs are coming come in that way now we are considering here very explicitly because in S3 and uh, SUN and these Hilbert spaces is, is both HR and HL are actually two dimensional. So each of them are two dimensional for these uh, these choices. And your Z M3L or whatever it is. This is actually given by this inner product. So your ZM3L is nothing but uh, this inner product between Chi and Psi. Now, we do not know Psi and we do not know Chi, so we uh, really, uh, uh, we, we, we can't evaluate ZM3L, but what we can do is something is this, that since it's a, it's a two-dimensional Hilbert space, any three vectors in this two-dimensional vector space will be linearly dependent. And uh, we will, so any, so suppose psi1, psi2, they belongs to uh, HR. So there exist to zero with alpha, beta, gamma. Longing to see. So this kind of relationship is what uh, it will be important for our next analysis. So what we will do? So you can you can now generate two more vectors. What you do is basically um, you replace this crossing with you can replace this configuration with two different kinds of configurations. So let me just draw all the possible configurations. So something like the original configuration was this. So 
So original configuration was this configuration. So one gets shy on uh, off function. Then one has another configuration. This two, this configuration. So let's call it uh, shy one. Uh, you will get another vector shy one. And another configuration this is some x2 and this is shy 2 now all of them so all of these vectors belong to this uh, hr and while keeping so this part is untouched. So this part is actually of untouched, whatever it is, it is. So there is nothing uh, touching in there. So in this way you can obtain, but, but these three are actually, why I took this uh, three combinations, uh, why these, these three kind of combinations. So what I have done, I have switched one in one case, I have switched the uh, crossing and uh, in another case, I've just opened the crossing, I've just spliced the cr crossing. So I've replaced uh, the crossing by uh, two parallel lines. And then essentially one will have try to equal to zero. But these three crossing and, and that, that and the relationship like kind of this kind of crossing in a knot where the rest of the it's it's only for a particular crossing but all others are kept uh, unchanged a relationship like a relationship among these kinds of among these kinds of crossings are actually used to define knot polynomials these are often called uh, uh, sky, skein relations these uh, relations, uh, these relationships are called skein relations. So, and then because this part is left unchanged, we uh, have three partition functions. Now, now what you can do, you, you, you just glue back this. So we have chi with this. You have you can you can glue back this ML with three copies of three copies of this three manifolds. So what you have is now same. Now you get back the same manifold, but you have generated three different kinds of links. So just to uh, give a so this was our original link was there, of course. Let's see this. So this was L, and you have created one. You have created like uh, so. So one you have created. something like this. So this is your L1 and you have created another, which is so this is this is another L2. So this is what you have created. So from from L you have created L1 and L2. So L1 is like, uh, L1, there is like two, two, uh, two circles are uh, linked and L2 is actually secretly a circle itself. So it, it, it's secretly an unknot. So you have to just uh, unfold it to see. So you have to take this uh, middle strand towards down to see uh, that it is, it is nothing but an unknot. 
but this kind of relationship is uh, called Skynes relations. Uh, they are used to define uh, various not polynomials. So they are actually uh, starting point, uh, the definition point of this not polynomials. And what we have actually obtained, uh, such uh, we have obtained a relation, these kind relations. Of course, we have to evaluate this alpha, beta, and uh, gamma. So when you take S U N and S three uh, in the S three. Then you, this can be well. So these have the values alpha equal to three power. Plus k equal to three power i phi. plus k and gamma equal to e to the power 2 pi i 1 minus n square n plus k. If you now put into uh, uh, these guys into there, then and you have to take common by uh, a common factor and introduce a new variable q to the power 2 pi i n plus k, you will actually see Something like that equal to zero, and and and, and this is and this is nothing but the uh, in relations uh, which are uh, 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 which are usually. Taken to be uh, definitions of not polynomial, and when n equal to two, this gives actually Jones polynomial. So when n equal to two, this gives actually Jones polynomial. So essentially, S three and S U two. K, this gives you a but one of the interesting part about this entire analysis is this that this entire analysis uh, uh, this analysis also works for uh, General three manifold, not just S three. So you know this 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 can survey uh, this can serve an introduction point to uh, whether knots. I mean, of course, we usually knots are considered in S three, but whether what happens if you if you embed uh, knots in other kinds of three manifolds, and and in, in, in this part, it's actually there are actually in this paper there are more there are various kind of uh, technique uh, there are other kind of uh, methods are used when you are when you have non-trivial M3 manifold, which actually have uh, been applied into other cases. For example, uh, there's this there's various surgery techniques on the manifolds are uh, introduced in this paper, which have been used to calculate uh, topological entanglement entropy in. By Kita and Presti. So, uh, just to paraphrase, to summarize that, what we saw is that this not invariant uh, can be obtained from 3DCS theory 
in a in a in already a manifest topological invariant way and and and, and in, in the process of course um, in the process of course uh, you use uh, all kinds of input from uh, to dcft dcft studies uh, connection with the ux1 exploits the 2d cft connections with the 2d cft and so uh, what 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 do you learn about so there are there are there are two points that this analysis while it uses this uh, just to make some historical comments that it uses uh, path integrals which is uh, still mathematical and indefined concept but obviously this uh, in this work served as an uh, starting point of a more mathematically rigorous way of understanding 3D topological quantum field theories, which uh, later appear axiomatized uh, along the lines. Also, uh, this paper uh, has a has some connection. Uh, it's actually inspired by an anal repeatedly by the analysis of a grime cycle on 2D CFTs, through which uh, it's connected. And uh, just to say that this. It's, it's this this entire uh, work by Witten has uh, so many ideas into it, like uh, it can be applied in various different directions. Uh, yeah, that's where I would like to end uh, the discussion. Any question? Uh, hi, uh, Parthiv, can I just ask yeah, a question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, yeah, by the way, for a very nice uh, summary. Uh, you did a lot of work, I think, no, to show this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, just uh, I do. Yeah. Sorry, go on. No, 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 no. Please, please. The, uh, Jones is uh, the name of Jones is J O N E S. So it is without apostrophe. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, don't yes. Worry, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. This is just to make a light comment. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I wanted to ask you is uh, how exactly, I mean, I know you didn't have time, but how exactly are alpha, beta, gamma computed? Oh, okay, okay. So alpha, beta, gamma is actually cal uh, computed. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. so this alpha, beta, gamma is actually calculated, at least we can calculate it uh, uh, using a CFT, uh, CFT technology. So there was some yeah. technology uh, that was developed in Moore and Cyborg's uh, work, uh, previous work, and they, so there, uh -huh. there, there is a there is a certain uh, transformation matrix that uh, matrix kind of stuff they defined, which uh, which acts on uh, uh, this various kind of representation, and then there was uh, adding uh, that. Uh, so I I did not. I did not go through that uh, Moore and Cyborg's paper. So, so basically, he okay. used that and uh, technology into this uh, paper. I yes. see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. That was the. Uh, that was. I think maybe you. Uh, I mean, that is the most uh, <laughs> uh, crucial step. And I, I guess you, uh, yes. you had to hurry because you were running out of time. I mean, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, also, also, when I prepared, I mean, I thought like, like you know, I did not know how much. Uh, because because it has lots yeah, of no, but it's, it's sort of kind of useful if you even just uh, uh, say a few sentences about how people uh, how he got alpha those alpha beta gamma because that's uh, that is the punch that is the key to the punchline right of getting yes, the yes, yes 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 yeah 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 so it comes from the work of uh, of uh, Moore and Cyborg. One yes, yes, I think it's this famous. Is it called? Uh, yes. Is it called taming the conformal zoo? Is it that paper? Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes. I think. Okay. okay. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, I I have to leave now. I see that there are yeah, not yeah. that people. So um, I don't want. To, I didn't yeah. want to leave hanging uh, with uh, yeah. <laughs> with nobody. Yeah. But so I have to leave now. Yeah, yeah. So thank you yeah, for yeah, your yeah. talk. Uh, yeah. I have a question. You yes. describe the several different kind of polynomials. Uh, yes, yes. Is there a hierarchy among them in the sense that one of them is a superset of the other, which means that it will distinguish all the knots which uh, the first polynomial did and it will distinguish some more or the polynomials are kind of different uh, disjoint uh, 
areas in the sense that there are some knots which one polynomial will distinguish better and some other knots which some other polynomial will distinguish better. Uh, yes, so for example, um, so, so, uh, so the Alexander Conway polynomial is the simplest polynomial, but it's for example, it, it cannot distinguish uh, between uh, a knot and its uh, mirror image. But Jones polynomial, can distinguish so Jones polynomial can distinguish all the uh, knots already uh, that can be distinguished by the Alexander Conway polynomial. Plus, it can distinguish between knots. Uh, I mean, it, it, um, there are some knots and their mirror images which the Alexander Conway polynomial cannot. But okay, then, so it's a uh, superset. Yes, yes. Okay. But then. So Jones polynomial is, for example, uh, Jones polynomial is one variable. Uh, so Alexander Conway polynomial is also one variable pol polynomial. Jones polynomial is also one variable polynomial. Then Jones polynomials also fails to distinguish. There is the, so there is a certain pair of mirror images and also certain not which Jones polynomial fail to distinguish. That uh, that distinct that distinction is that distinction is possible by this homfly pt polynomial. So homfly pt polynomial in a sense is a so it's a two variable polynomial, but it's a generalization of the Jones polynomial. So you can actually get the Jones polynomial from the Humphrey pt polynomial. So, okay, so there is a hierarchy so, among all these things. Yes, yeah, yeah there is a hierarchy. But I think it's still still the problem of completely classifying is, uh, I mean, in terms of knots is not uh, complete. So for example, there's an open problem in knot theory that does Jones polynomial can detect unknot, meaning Suppose I calculate the Jones polynomial for a certain knot, uh, uh, and it turns out to be equal to that Jones polynomial of an unknot. Does it mean that then that knot is uh, ambient isotopic to or equivalent to uh, the unknot? But that problem is an un, uh, known um, unsolved problem, open problem. But uh, of people, what people have done, people have constructed uh, like uh, homology theory. Uh, corresponding to Jones polynomial, which, however, gives an answer. So, for example, there is a homology theory called Kovana homology, whose Euler characteristics is the Jones polynomial. But, uh, so that homology theory can uh, detect the unknown. But, uh, of course, the, there's a lingering question that whether you can reach uh, kind of a complete, uh, a polynomial which can completely topologically uh, distinguish knots. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah.